it's Nikki here. I'm here today to do my book of the month review for my book club. It's The Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. Uh, this will be spoiler filled. I will be discussing it as if whoever's watching this has read the book. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please click off. Or if you're interested to hear what it's about and don't mind being spoiled, keep on listening. The summary for this book is that you follow the main protagonist, Peter Grant, um, as he kind of transfers from his probationary period as an officer for the London Metropolitan Police to his first kind of department assignment. And this is a department that just seems a little odd. He finds out that he's the only one other than his senior detective who's in it. And the first case he's on is a very odd case of a murder in a London park. I think it's Covent, Covent Gardens is how you say it. And the eyewitness that he interviewed is already dead. He interviews a ghost. As he's solving the case, he is casually kind of introduced to this world of magic that he didn't know existed by his senior detective turned teacher. And it's just very interesting watching him solve the case and be introduced to all these, this modern world of magic based on more ancient folklore. Uh, moving on from this, I will go to my likes and dislikes. My likes for this one include the magic system. It's not super complex, but it's accessible and it is well explained. So you kind of, you do understand how the magic works and where its limits are, which gives you a very good idea of what Peter can do as he learns magic and what other magic users can do in those in the world. I also enjoy how magic is woven into the modern world. Um, so like you get introduced to mother and father river and father river has been around for so long. and the kind of life that you associate with like Father River, a little bit more nomadic, that just things that you would associate kind of with the stereotype of what you think of Old Man River. And that was really interesting. Um, and the other thing I really liked was the relationships that Peter had with the other characters. The first one you meet is Leslie. It's an old buddy of his from who went to school with him. And although he does desire her to some respect, he still does a lot of friendly things with her and respects her. And you get the same thing with the other, some of the other women he meets. If he's attracted to them, he talks about how he's attracted to them. But he doesn't underestimate them either. And he ends up treating them with respect. He finds his senior detective a little odd. And their interactions show that he, even though he thinks he's odd, he respects his knowledge and wants to learn from him because he does see that he, this guy has something to offer. My fourth and final like is that there's just this really interesting air of mystery surrounding Nightingale and Molly, who's the maid at the Foley, which, which is the home base for Peter and Nightingale. I like the air of mystery surrounding them. You get to know them and you, you, you find out they're kind of odd, they're a little weird. But as you go, Peter uncovers a few things that kind of indicates that they're more odd and more weird than you initially think, which ends up being really interesting. But I really appreciated the way it did that because it introduces these characters, you grow to like them, and because of that, you want to know more about them. So this air of mystery surrounding them just makes them more interesting. Uh, moving on to my dislikes, uh, I have four of them. One is the lack of explanation about the magic and the agreement, which they refer to really regularly. You only get these little trickles of information. And while I don't feel like the author needed to dump that kind of information over our head, I would have liked to have had a more involved explanation of the magic world and the agreement and where exactly and where exactly it arose from. My second dislike was the kind of weird pacing. You'd have quick pacing and slow pacing and sometimes the slow pacing would go on longer than I expected and the quick pacing would be over much quicker than I thought and it did reflect kind of the action versus research portions of the story but they're just kind of irregular there wasn't a really good rhythm to it. So it did catch me off at guard at first and that made the first, I'd say probably 50-ish pages were a little harder to get into because of it. Overall, like not a huge turnoff, but just it made the beginning of the story a rough go. <laughs> my third dislike is kind of regard in regards to Peter's distractedness. They describe him as being kind of distracted and not focused. And for some reason they seem to think that that's gonna go well with the magic world and they never really say why and I don't really understand like I get that he's curious and smart and logical and I get how that would translate over well but the way they talk about it it seems to imply that this kind of like otherworldliness and distractedness to his personality is also a benefit I don't get it 
I hope they expand upon it later on because it makes no sense to me right now. And then the fourth dislike I had is Peter's casualness about magic. If I was in the same situation and I found out magic was real, I can't necessarily say that I would freak out, but I would definitely have questions. And his questions are more logical as if someone who's just had time, had so much time to come to terms with magic existing, having never learned about it or believed about in it before this. And Peter's just like, oh, magic is real? Okay, cool, bro. And moves on. And I just, it's such a weird reaction. And I spent half of my book being like, why isn't he more excited about this? Why isn't he freaking out about this? I guess it, it speaks more to me than it does about Peter, but it's just, it's odd and I would have liked a little bit more of a reaction or if he'd had a reaction for him to have just shown it. Like it was part of the reason along with the pacing why the beginning of the book for me was a little harder to get into just because of the lack of reaction and the excitement surrounding the discovery of magic and that sense of discovery of magic. Uh, that being said, I will move now to my characters. All right, so I'm gonna talk kind of about the four main characters and I'm gonna touch on one of the supernatural kind of group of characters that we talked about. So Peter Grant is your main protagonist. Uh, he's an offer with the London Metro Police and he is moving from being a probationary officer to getting kind of a department assignment and it's this odd department for weird things and kind of restricted by this agreement between the magical and non-magical world. He is quite relatable, but I still found him like he's very he's very relatable, he's pretty average. And somehow despite learning magic, I found him uninteresting at times and it was it was very strange. I overall I enjoyed him. He just had these blocks of time where I'm just what I was questioning kind of what was he doing? Why is he an idiot? And he was just he was a little boring to read sometimes. That's really all it was. Uh, however, because of his background, he was very scientific, so it was nice seeing him go up against magic with a little bit more of an analytical goal, thought processes, so kind of just determining what he can and can't do around certain things with his magic. Uh, the second character I'm going to talk about is Thomas Nightingale. Uh, he's Peter Superior in this new department. He has a pretty secretive history, and it's not so much that he's not telling Peter anything. It's Peter hasn't really asked, and when he has asked questions about his past, he does divulge it. And one of the big things here is he's super bad with technology from everything from telephones on, really. And it's very interesting watching him go, oh yeah, I forgot you can do that now, or that, oh yeah, that's a thing now, or oh, can technology do this for me? Uh, one thing that I found not to, although I didn't like it in Peter, I appreciated it in Nightingale was that he was very casual about magic, and I think that was a reflection of how Peter was reacting to it. And so he's very casual about teaching Peter the magic and introducing the magic. And it's not that he wasn't strict, he was strict when he needed to be, he just wasn't adding a heightened sense of drama every time he introduced something, which was like, I could appreciate. The third character I'm going to talk about is Molly. Um, she's the maid at the Foley, which is the home base for Peter and Nightingale. She's silent, strange, and there's something about her that's not quite human, although you don't get really get to explore it too much. And I really enjoy her interactions with Peter because it's a lot of facial expressions and head tilts. And it's really fun getting to see Peter react to her actions and respond to them. And kind of the conversation that almost develops from it. It's, it's, it's an interesting twist and it's a lot of fun to read. Uh, and my fourth kind of main character here is uh, Leslie May. She is the friend and former, like, student peer of Peter. They finished school together and were doing their probationary periods together and they received their department assignments from the same time. Uh, she gets cast to kind of the murder homicide division and uh, she kind of, her big thing is that she gets kind of caught up in Peter's case because Peter's case is technically homicides because it happens because of this really strange murder in the garden and She's doing your stereotypical police work and Peter is doing the woo-woo supernatural police work and their cases combined. Because, uh, one thing I did appreciate about their interactions is despite Peter being attracted to Leslie and desiring Leslie, he never really treated her poorly. Like he would make a few kind of like sexual innuendos, which wasn't anything crazy or terrible or too offensive. 
but he also still respected her and like understood that she was a good person and a solid cop and that those things were important as well and he did respect those in her character and I appreciated that. The supernatural character group that I'm going to talk about is the, I'm going to call them the Rivers. You kind of meet the clans of Mother, Mother of the Thames River and Father of the Thames River and it was really nice the way that it was set up because your first like really good introduction into the supernatural and into the fantasy portion of London and it was really nice because it showed how things hide in plain sight, how their power is used, what it's used for, and what these kind of, for lack of a better term, deities are protecting. They did use a Latin term in the book and I cannot pronounce it, so I'm going to call them river deities. <laughs> and it was really good because you got this really nice introduction into kind of a little bit of the culture surrounding some of the supernatural portions of London, but you also kind of got a glimpse into the politics surrounding it and the politics that led to the agreement being made. Uh, now I'm gonna move on to the portion of my book review that is the book club questions, which I traditionally have been doing with the book of the month books. Uh, my first question is, what is your initial reaction? Um, my initial reaction to the book was just genuine curiosity. I wasn't entirely sure where it was gonna go or how it was gonna handle Peter being introduced to the magic world. My second question, is, is the book plot-based or character-driven? I would say this one is more plot-based because you are trying to solve a crime. The characters do add a good amount of flavor to it, but it's definitely more about solving this murder. My third question is, what is your favorite chapter or scene? Um, honestly, one of my favorite scenes is where Peter is trying to figure out how far away magic has to be from computer chips so it doesn't fry them. I just really enjoyed that it was logical and a little scientifically based and it let some other parts of his personality come forward that you didn't get with the rest of the detective work. Four was the setting unique. Could the story have happened anywhere? I wouldn't say that the setting was unique but neither could have it ha necessarily have happened anywhere. Um, a story like this would be best placed in a large city with lots of culture lots of landmarks and lots of history and it was based in London which has all three of those things. I wouldn't technically call it unique because it could have happened in other similar cities in like continental Europe or in the United States even. Fifth question, how did the characters change throughout the story? Um, Peter himself, he didn't change tons but he was allowed to kind of come into him into his own just with this introduction into the magic world what the magic world was and how he fit into it. Nightingale changed a little bit um, just because more through force of effort with Peter, he did kind of modernize a little bit. He did reveal a little bit more, shared a little bit more. And you could really tell that when he was growing, it was more being accustomed to having a partner again. That leads me to my sixth question. Which character did you relate to the most? I honestly didn't really relate to any of these characters. The personalities and situations they were in and careers they were in didn't really connect to me. Um, I was more interested in the story because of the plot and wanting to figure out what was going on and solving the mystery along with the characters. Uh, seven, how do you feel about the ending? I'm pretty happy with the ending. It's all like they figured out what was going on and how to solve it, which was great. They didn't do it without negative consequences also occurring, and I really enjoyed that. Then you have question eight. What was the pacing like? For me, the pacing was pretty meh. I had mentioned it kind of in my dislikes there. The pacing was pretty irregular in the beginning, which made it a little bit harder for me to get into the book. And once it smoothed out and a pattern, and there was a little bit more of a pattern, it was easier to move. Um, so I didn't find the pacing particularly effective, but it didn't ruin necessarily ruin the story either. It just made it hard to get into the story. Uh, question nine, would you? read another book by this author. I'm going to give this a big old yes. Um, it is part of a series. I think there's six books in total, including this one. And then question 10, uh, does this remind, does this book remind you of any other books? Um, in terms of kind of general feel, just like weirdness and not taking itself too seriously. This actually makes me think a little bit of uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, which I believe Douglas Adams writes. It's an, I'm not saying that they're the same, but just the overall feel of the story kind of made me think of that book. So if you enjoyed this, maybe give that one a try. And the second books that this actually kind of reminds me of is Harry Potter, not necessarily in the story arc 
or not necessarily in the sense of the story arc, but just that there's this hidden world of magic that kind of intertwined, a lot of it is intertwined with your daily lives. And they're both just that kind of low fantasy where it's magic in this fantasy world, but it's occurring rooted very much in reality in a world that we already know. And that's all of the book club questions I wanted to do for my book of the month. So to wrap up, I'll just give you an overall summary again here. It was, so overall it was a very interesting urban fantasy novel. The characters were believable and even if I didn't relate to them, I could see other people relating to them because they were very grounded. The magic system was very accessible and set definite limits to what could be done. So magic can't just kind of infinitely be used and exploited, which was really nice. And there was a good location for the story. Uh, lots of local landmarks, lots of history, lots of culture to deal with. Uh, the only thing was this book overall, there's something in the tone and the pacing that just really didn't quite hit the mark with me. So it was a good read, it just wasn't a great read. It's like Peter's casualness about magic was kind of weird and threw me off. But once I got used to it, that was less of an issue, but in the beginning it made it a really big deal. The magic system here, is not overly complex, but it is well explained and accessible, which was really nice. It really just touched on the bare essentials of how magic is gonna be used in the beginning, and I'm hoping it'll develop as the skills of the protagonist develops. Um, so kind of overall, good, not great. My rating for Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich is three stars out of five. It's definitely good enough. I'm gonna see if I can track down the sequel to see if I enjoyed enough to continue on. Um, but if urban fantasy or low fantasy really isn't your thing, you probably won't enjoy this very much. Um, that being said, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.